Hello friends, this is Kik, and in today's episode, we have the upcoming flexible iPad from Cupertino folks awaiting you. Owners of the new Apple Watch are complaining about flickering screens. The first portable console from China with an Intel Meteor Lake chip. The Japanese who created an inflatable robot avatar. Jetson 1, which became the first EV tall to be certified for flights in Italy. The silent electric motorcycle for off-road from the startup Vulcan and SpaceX, which plans to conduct 144 rocket launches in 2024. Three flights a week. All this and much more right now. Let's go. We will start today's episode with a new product from Apple, namely the flexible iPad. According to Digitimes, Apple is preparing to release its first iPad with a flexible screen. The device may be introduced as early as the end of 2024, which is exactly a year from now. Supply chain analysis showed that Apple engineers are actively working on the design of the foldable tablet. Insiders insist that small-scale production will begin in the first half of 2024. The presentation of the brand new iPad will take place either in September 2024 or at the beginning of 2025. At the moment, Apple is choosing who to collaborate with, Samsung or LG. One of these companies will supply flexible OLED displays for Apple to equip the iPads. Analysts claim that the foldable iPad will visually resemble current models, but the novelty can be folded in half for comfortable transportation. Apple had considered making an iPad with two separate screens, but dropped the idea at the last moment. Now, Apple engineers face two major challenges. The first is to make the fold in the middle the least noticeable among those of competitor devices. The second is to make the hinge as reliable as possible. Possible. For comparison, the hinge in the MacBook has a highly complex design and consists of 885 parts. Analysts have not yet dared to name the estimated cost of the first flexible iPad. What do you think about the new product? Is it worth waiting for or is it a waste of money? We await your comments. And since we started with Cupertino, let's continue with them. Owners of the new Apple Watch have been complaining about flickering screens. On Reddit, various forums, and even on Apple's support site, you can find reviews from Apple Watch owners reporting random screen flickering when activated by raising the wrist. Apparently, this issue is observed in the new models introduced last month. Interestingly, a similar issue occurred in the past with Apple Watch Series 6. And seemingly, users lived with it for a whole year until Apple fixed the flickering with the release of Watch OS 8. Some speculate that this is not a bug, but merely a feature of the automatic brightness adjustment. However, how to explain that it occurred and then disappeared on older models and now is observed only with the new watch owners. Moreover, part of the user interface appears pink for some users where it shouldn't be. Apple has already responded to the complaints and recommends disabling the always-on display feature as a temporary solution. Currently, the company is investigating the issues with flickering and the pink hue of the interface. Meanwhile, the author of the YouTube channel Geek Culture tested the performance of the new smartphone Oppo Find N3. He did not run less informative benchmarks, but went straight to see how popular games perform on the device. Before the testing began, the body temperature was around 30 degrees, with minor deviations across the surface. Importantly, the video's author decided to check how the device will perform in a balanced performance mode, so we didn't see the full potential of the device. First up was Honkai, Star Rail in which there were minor frame rate drops below 50 FPS, but mostly the game tried to to maintain the set 60 fps with no obvious lags all settings of course were set to maximum the body temperature changed insignificantly the situation with genshin impact was different for instance in the city the frame rate could drop almost to 30 fps but outside the city and even during battle scenes it remained within 50 60 feps the body warmed up to around 40 degrees with call of duty mobile and pubg mobile everything was nearly perfect almost stable 60 and 90 fps respectively as a result the video's author was more than pleased with the performance of Oppo Find N3. He also noted that after 43 minutes in demanding games, the smartphone discharged by 28%. Likely, in maximum performance mode, the frame rate can be higher, but the temperature and autonomy would change accordingly. The Chinese company Mdor has showcased a new gaming console reminiscent of the Steam Deck. According to the vendor, it will be the first in its segment to feature an Intel Meteor Lake series processor with an integrated Arc Graphics 5 video core. It is known that the device will have an 8-inch IPS screen with a resolution of 1928 x 1200 pixels, up to 32GB of LPDDR5X standard RAM, and a slot for an SSD. NVMe M2 PCIe Gen 4R4 with a capacity of up to 2TB. Windows 11 is announced as the operating system. The company has not yet provided detailed information about the CPU. It is known that the processor's TDP will range from 20 to 35 watts. The Intel Arc Graphics 5 rumored to have between 4 to 8 Z cores. The console is shown in detail in a video. On its rear panel, you can notice a large ventilation grill for the cooling system and standard controls for such devices. The price and release date of the console have not yet been announced. 
Moving on, the personal single-seat Copter 1, created by the Swedish startup Jetson, became the first among ultralight aircraft to receive permission for flights in uncontrolled airspace in Italy. Recently, Jetson raised an additional $15 million and just the other day announced receiving permission for recreational flights of one in uncontrolled airspace in Italy from the local regulator, Aero Club d'Italia. On the same day, the startup reported completing the first flight over US territory. It also mentioned that the Italian Civil Aviation Authority approved the unmanned trials of Jetson 1. Moreover, Jetson plans to move to Italy, set up production in Tuscany, and place its headquarters in Florence, near a private airfield where testing can be conducted. There will also be a Jetson 1 pilot school for those who purchase this airmobile. The company has already sold over 300 units at a price of $98,000. Jetson 1 is a seat with a light frame and four rotors with large blades. Control is via a joystick and pedals, almost like a helicopter. A patented system of cameras, LIDARs, and software helps avoid collisions, while an auxiliary engine, ballistic parachute, and emergency landing mode ensure safety. One can accelerate up to 100 km h with the battery lasting for 15-20 minutes of flight. The maximum pilot weight is 85 kilo. Engineers from Japan have created an inflatable robot avatar that integrates with a telepresence system. Through cables and servo motors, it exhibits gestures and moves, allowing a remote user to communicate and interact with people. Modern robot avatars can be divided into two types, complex and expensive humanoid robots that allow physical interaction with the environment, and simpler and more accessible telepresence systems such as tablets on wheels. They enable people to mimic presence through video calls, move around a room and inspect it using a camera. Engineers are already looking for ways to expand the capability capabilities of these simpler systems to make them more comprehensive and useful. However, in the future, with the advancement of technology, the difference between these two types of devices may disappear entirely. The robot was tested at one of the symposiums, which was held in a hybrid format. Part of the participants were physically present in the audience, while others participated online. The robot moved around the audience, transmitting images to 600 online participants. In the future, engineers plan to conduct more detailed studies of the inflatable body's capabilities using computer simulation. They also intend to expand the set of available gestures and develop new usage scenarios for the inflatable robot. This will create more opportunities for communication at any distance. The company Volconi Power Sports has released an electric motorcycle with a low noise level. Evolved from a standard farm electric bicycle, the Grunt Evo is lightweight despite its bulky appearance and is capable of conquering off-road terrains. Weighing just 130 kg, the model is built on a voluminous steel frame with a maximum load of 180 kg. The motorcycle also features a front inverted hydraulic fork with a 43 mm stem and a rear swing arm with a Walker Evans racing spring shock absorber. A Gates carbon toothed belt is used in the transmission, which allows for a quieter ride. Inside, a central electric motor with a power of 8 kilo is installed, with four available driving modes, stroll, explore, sport, and reverse gear, and a maximum speed of 64 km h. The motor is powered by a replaceable battery with a capacity of 2.3 kilo dears, providing a range of up to 112 kilometers. A full charge takes four hours. All electronics are protected according to the IP67 standard. Volcon Grunt Evo is offered in three color options, and its price is $59.99 US dollars. And what's a kick without space? SpaceX plans to perform 144 rocket launches in 2024, three flights a week. Next year, SpaceX intends to carry out up to 12 flights a month or up to 144 launches a year. The company is undoubtedly capable of achieving this figure. SpaceX has launched two missions within a single day several times. For instance, in March of this year, it launched two Falcon 9 rockets with a gap of less than 4.5 hours. SpaceX has no shortage of payload that needs to be delivered to space. The company has been granted permission to deploy 12 12,000 Starlink satellites and has applied for approval to launch an additional 30,000 spacecraft. The mega constellation now consists of 5,000 active satellites. About 60% of SpaceX's launches in 2023 were related to Starlink. Most of SpaceX's orbital missions are carried out using the Falcon 9 rocket, which is their primary rocket complex. Some tasks are performed by the heavy rocket Falcon Heavy. Eight Falcon Heavy launches have already taken place, four of which were this year, matching the record for the number of launches in a year held by the heavy rocket Saturn V. SpaceX is working on a successor rocket for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Starship, unlike Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, whose upper stages are single-use, Starship will be reusable for hundreds of launches. SpaceX is currently preparing for the second test flight of Starship. During the hearings, Gerstenmaier stated that the rocket has been ready for launch for over a month, but SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration of the USA. That's all for today, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye!